Hello friends, so welcome to this lecture on storage account creation and we will see how we can access the access keys. So in the previous lectures, we have already discussed about the limitation of use of access keys. So we will see how we can access those keys. So let's create a new storage account. There is only one storage account which is created by default when you create your Azure account. So we will create a new storage account. Uh, within the Azure portal and so we'll use the same resource group security architects hyphen resource group and then name is I will choose security account test okay because it should have a unique name so we'll mention one two okay so it is already there security account test will give the name 389 and then we'll choose the location as East US so there is no particular reason for choosing this for most of my demos I'm choosing this reason so you can choose any reason which you want and we'll click on networking and then right now we'll allow all networks we'll discuss that point as well Okay, we'll next when we'll review and create. So now we'll create the storage account. Now this process of uh, creating the storage account will take a couple of minutes. For the time being, I am going to pause the video. So once it is completed, I'll come back. Now our deployment has been succeeded. We'll go to that particular source. So this is the storage account, SA test 389 we have created. So now in this lecture, we'll be discussing about the access keys and how we'll provide access to the storage account. So if you'll click under settings on the left hand side on the storage account you have created see these are the this is the storage account and this is the key so and this is the connection string so if you'll see the connection string it is like the protocol name which we have created and after that it is the key only and then it will mention the endpoint name and all those parameters it is mentioned so it is the combination of your storage account and so we can scroll on to left if i'll copy i can show it to you that okay what i'm talking about so let's say if i'll copy into a notepad and see it is endpoints fix score windows.net so it is the combination of your the storage account name and the account key if you'll see starts with 63 and end with 4yq so let's go to the storage account and see it is 4vq and starting with 63 and these are basically the two access keys uh, which you get when you create your storage account so that you can provide access uh, provide uh, this access keys to your uh, application owner so that they can access your storage account but if you remember in the last lecture we have already discussed that okay these storage account access keys like one and two they are like root password to your storage account and from a security best practice uh, it is very crucial that okay we protect our access keys and rather than hard coding these access keys within the applications it is always recommended that okay you store these access keys within the key vault and then your application can access those keys from your key vault rather than manually hard coding or giving them to the application owner and another thing if you'll see in the lecture we have already discussed if you provide the access keys to the application owner it provide a full access to all the blobs containers and everything to the uh, to the application owners so in that case uh, we need to be very careful when we provide the access keys to the uh, to the people and Microsoft always recommend the use of uh, Active Directory security principle to provide access to the users or applications using the role-based access. So we can see uh, how we can provide that 
but if you want to store let's say these access keys like microsoft recommends rather than hard coding them we can also store these access keys within the key vault so and the reason we have already used uh, discussed about the key one and key two is like if we have implemented the key rotation so in that case while uh, uh, this uh, while the key one is being uh, uh, you know given to the application and you want to use the key to so in that case you plan the rotation accordingly so that that key one is updated by the application managers and then once it is uh, and once you are done with the key rotation of two then you can give the key rotation two to them so that they can update the key at their end because if you'll give the key one and at the back end if you do the key rotation let's say for key one then there would be an interruption and application would not be able to access because they are still using the old keys and you have rotated the key so that is why key one and key two are given so now rather than hard coding we can store these keys within a key vault we'll see how we can do that so let's say if i'll go to key vault and we already created one key vault yesterday let me check if it that is there or not yeah so we have security architects hyphen key vault created so what we can do is so basically key vault can store your keys uh, as a secrets uh, within the key vaults you can click on secret generate and then type in manual rather than you know clicking on certificate and will mentions uh, as a test key has been stored and so we'll paste the secret over here and mention the key and then will not check any option activation date and as of now in this particular lab so we'll click on create so you can see this has been created and can be accessed by the application so rather than hard coding it into the your application and now we'll come back to our storage account which we have created so this was the storage account we have created and so this is about the access keys and now the another thing which we can do is uh, providing access uh, using the active directory to provide access to your storage account see we have discussed in the previous lectures as well that storage account using uh, ad basically to authorize access to your blob queues which you have in your storage account so with the help of which you'll be able to provide role based access to your storage account so to provide role based access to your storage account you can click on i am so in that case any you can provide access to a user group or a application or an you can say a service principal and that particular service principal will be authorized uh, and will be given uh you can say uh will be authorized by the your azure ad and it basically gives the token and then token is basically used to authorize the request against your uh, blob or queue storage so you can click on add role and add role assignment so these are the different roles which you can provide to provide role based access to your storage account so you can provide the contributor access reader access and remember one thing if you are studying the roles so try checking the microsoft documentation because couple of roles if you remember are for providing the uh, management plane access to your storage account and it will not provide access to any of the data within that like blob queue or uh, you know files we have because if you provide the storage account contributor and the user or a service principal needs to access in turn the blob or some queue data so in that case it will not be able to access so choose the roles wisely because blob and all those roles which are specifically to the data within the uh, within the storage account it provide access to the data not to the storage account so to manage the storage account provide the storage account uh, contributor reader and all those roles which we have so this is how you can provide access to the storage account to uh, via the ad and once you let's say select that then you need to provide the uh, that okay uh, 
uh, you know which user or a group you need to provide like service you need to provide the access maybe to a function app logic app virtual machine all those information you can provide it from here so this is it uh, in this lecture friends so in this lecture uh, we have created a storage account as say test 389 and then we'll we have seen that okay how we can store those access keys within the key vault and how we can provide the role based access so this is it friends uh, in this lecture thank you for watching this lecture